What's up guys, it's Kyra and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am back with another makeup do's and don'ts style video. Uh, and today's video will be all about highlighting and contouring. So I've done brows, I've done eyes, and now we are on to the skin and that is all about highlighting and contouring. So as you guys can see, I'm coming to you guys with my brows already done, foundation on, and my eyes already done. Um, if you haven't seen my brow and eyeshadow do's and don'ts video, I definitely will link that down below Low, but today again is focused all on the hottie and contouring now you guys know I typically do not do cream contour I typically just stick with concealer and powder um, I just feel like cream contouring is an extra step that I only do if I'm going somewhere at night and I only do it whenever I'm going out at night simply because the cream contour will help my, you know, contour and everything to show up whenever I take pictures with flash. It's just an extra step that I honestly don't feel like doing and honestly don't believe is necessary, but I wanna do the full shebang today and show you guys what I would do if I were doing a cream contour and a powder contour. This is gonna be pretty straightforward. I feel like, honestly, I feel like highlighting and contouring is one of those things that's really, really, really hard in my opinion to mess up. As long as you know your natural face shape and you know what shades to pick, it's super easy peasy. And again, it's all about the shades, okay? The shades, you guys. Okay, so first and foremost, whenever you wanna go in and do your concealer or your highlight, the most important part is to make sure that you have the right shade of concealer. I typically go two shades lighter than my normal skin tone. So today on my right side, I'll be using the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind in the shade Golden. I love this concealer. It's drugstore, so it's super affordable. You can find it almost anywhere, Walmart, Target, the grocery store, wherever. And I love this one because of the tone. I've mentioned before how much I love the shade of this because it's very golden and it's really complimentary of my skin tone. If I had more red undertones, I would pick something that had a little bit more red under it. Same thing if I were more pale and I had, you know, pink undertones. You wanna pick something that has those same undertones. So it's all about picking the concealer that it works for your skin tone. If you are a beginner, that does take a bit of trial and error, but if you're in my general complexion, the Instant Age Rewind by Maybelline in the shade Golden is perfect. So I just apply this, okay? under my eye, okay? And the idea is basically to draw a small triangle. That's the easiest way to apply it. So kind of start from the inner corner here and draw down. And I never go past like my nostril. So just apply it here and then of course bring it up and then fill this in with concealer. If you have perfect skin, you don't really have blemishes or aren't worried about covering up too much, you may want to apply less concealer. If you do have dark circles or something that you do want to cover up, then you want to apply more concealer. Now, of course, on the don't side, a common mistake is to pick a concealer that's way too light for your skin tone. So I'll be using the Tarte Shape Tape in the shade Medium. Now, this is too light. I can tell you I use it on my lighter clients, so I know this is too light for my skin tone. You guys see the difference here? And it's funny because whenever I first got into makeup, I would pick concealers that are this shade. So I've come a long way, you guys, and trust me, it's a common mistake. It's just, again, lessons learned. And another mistake that I see is people, A, drag the concealer too far out, okay? And bring their concealer too far down. Now, this is an absolute no-no. And this is an absolute no-no because the whole point of highlighting is to attract light or bring out those features that you want to highlight. So in my opinion, whenever you're hot and contouring, the whole idea is to create dimension. So you want your under eye area to, you know, look brighter and look more awake. And whenever you apply that contour, you want it to basically detract light or kind of, you know, shrink those features. Whenever you drag your concealer too far down, you're basically gonna be attracting light to this whole entire area, which will basically start to conflict with that contour. Because whenever you start to contour in, you're gonna have your contour down, down here. So it's gonna basically throw off your features. And honestly, it'll actually make your face shape look completely different and it won't be pleasant. I'm telling you guys, it won't, it won't, it, it just won't work. You wanna keep your highlighter in this general area. Don't bring it too far down or too far up. Kinda just keep it right in that pocket and that way whenever you're going in contour, you can really focus on contouring right at those cheekbones. And then it'll also be much, much easier to blend in the concealer or your highlight with the contours. A beauty blender, you can't really mess this up. You just look up and blend 
this out. And as you're blending, you're just basically using a very, very, very light hand and just pouncing on that product to help distribute it evenly. And the key focus here is to blend out those harsh edges. Now, as you'll see, as I'm blending it out, I'm actually kind of blending it out downwards and blending it upwards. And that's how I always blend it out. And that's okay. Because if you remember, I applied the bulk of the product in the center. So as I'm blending it out, I'm not really actually moving product around or actually having to worry about getting rid of a bunch of product. Whenever I blend it out that way, I'm just simply transferring or blending out whatever is left over and just kind of creating like that nice diffusion there. So you see how we have a nice hide and under eye, but again, the transition from here to there is very, very flawless, okay? So on the other side, we have it too far up, you guys. So because you applied product up here, it's gonna be really, really, really hard to blend this out. So I'm gonna start up here and then blend, again, use the same technique, but as you can see, I'm blending it down onto my lower cheek area and basically onto my jawline, and that's what we don't want. And even up here, because you applied product up here in the upper temple area, there's not really anywhere else for this product to go besides into your, your hairline. So I, I'm already doing too much, okay? So again, look up and just blend this out, okay? So you see already, you guys see the difference between the shades that I picked? You see how much more subtle this one is as opposed to how bright and bold this one is? Too light under there, it's just too much. Over here, I look awake and like I look bright, but not overdone. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep blending this out. This is basically going into my hairline now at this point because I didn't really have anywhere for it to go. And now this is about as good as it's gonna get as far as blending out this side. So we already have a major, major concern on this side because of how bright it is. And now we just have a streak of makeup right here. You see how it's kind of just going up <laughs> as opposed to this side where it looks like it's fading from, you know, the foundation to concealer into foundation again. This is what we want. So next up is going to be your contour. Now, again, I don't this very often. On my right side, I'm gonna just go ahead and apply a little bit a contour, okay? So I used to make the huge mistake of applying way too much cream contour and it would be so hard, okay? So hard to blend it out. But it's like the older I've gotten and the more I do makeup, I realize less is better. So I'm gonna just go ahead and focus the cream contour. Who that? My cheekbone is right in here where that bone is, okay? So I just focus on applying that product right where that bone is. Okay, so I just apply a little line here. I even apply a little bit of product going upwards because that'll help me, of course, again, blend in the highlight with the contour. If I bring the product up just a little bit. And then I just do a couple swipes along my forehead and then maybe a little bit down here along my jawline just to kind of create some more dimension and some depth down there. But I don't really need that too, too much. So that's how I typically would cream contour. Now on the don't side, Again, with the concealer, you wanna pick a shade that is complementary of your skin tone. So I typically try to stay away from cooler or gray undertone concealers to contour with. Now this one here that I'm gonna show you guys is not that bad at all, but it'll show you guys the difference that the colors make, okay? So this is the shade Truffle. It's the Truffle Matchstick from Fenty Beauty. And I picked this one because it is a little bit on the cooler side, okay? So this one over here is just a true chocolate brown. And also, pay attention to consistencies, okay? So this one over here, it was the Maybelline Super Stay Foundation Stick in the shade Mocha. And this foundation stick over here is very, very creamy and it's super easy to blend out. The Fenty stick, however, is not as creamy. I'm um, a little bit thicker and it's honestly a little bit more work to blend out. So they're two very, very, very different consistencies and also shades and undertones. So over here, I'm gonna actually do a common mistake, which is to bring your contour down too far. Okay, so up here, we put it right at the cheekbone, right in here where our bone is, okay. So over here, my cheekbone is right here, right? But a lot of people will bring it down too far. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my contour down here. 
okay? So you see the difference up here, it's diagonal. It's fitting my face shape. Over here, it's down way too far, okay? I'm gonna also apply way too much, okay? Same thing over here. Way, way, way too much on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my Beauty Blender and just blend out the right side. And I love the Maybelline Super Stay Foundation because as you can see, you guys, it blends out. Like that was literally a couple, couple pats and we were, we were good. So this is just super easy and it's drugstore, okay? So over here, I'm gonna go ahead and blend out that contour. And as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm actually blending the product upwards. So instead of blending it downwards, which would be me kind of going the opposite way, like bringing the product down, I'm actually blending it upwards into the concealer. Because the whole idea is that I basically want to marry or merge the highlight into the contour. And I want to keep that same facial structure. So if you blend it down too far or down too low, you'll start to alter the face shape. So again, blending it upwards helps to marry them both. and just keeps that shape. So you see how it's like nice and blended. It's not too harsh, not too dark. It's very, very, very subtle. And in my opinion, the foundation, the highlight and the contour blend together perfectly. Okay, so over here, we got a lot going on over here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and take that same beauty blender and actually blend this product kind of just all over the place. I just wanna just blend it away. I'm not focusing on blending it upwards. I'm just blending it whatever way I feel, which is actually, I'm putting it downwards. You guys see the difference? So I'm putting it down on towards my jawline. So that's definitely a no-no. Same thing with my forehead. I'm just blending it really far into my forehead. I don't really care about where it's going, about placement, anything. I'm kind of just blending away just because with no technique in mind. So that already, it just, so to me, that just looks really, really, really messy. Okay, and in my opinion, I just really, really, really prefer the shade and tone of the mocha stick as opposed to the truffle. Okay, so that is done. I'm gonna go ahead and set my right side with my RCMA No Color Powder. But you guys know my rule, I always say to look up, blend out the concealer under your eyes to prevent creasing, okay? And then once you blend it out, those creases under your eye, then you set. You don't wanna set the creases, okay? So if it's creasing under your eye, before you set it, go ahead and blend it out with the Beauty Blender first, blend out those creases and then set it. And that way you'll prevent that creasing under your eye, okay? So again, look up, blend out those creases and set, okay? And I do also, apply a little bit of the powder onto the side of my nose just because I feel like that kind of helps to also help with contouring your nose as well. Alrighty, and we are set. And I do only set the concealer or the highlight. I don't set the contour. I'll set the contour later on with a contour powder or a bronzing powder. But as far as the translucent powder goes, I only apply that to the concealer. Okay, so on the don'ts, I'm gonna go ahead and also set the highlight but I'm gonna set it with the banana powder and I'm gonna bake it for too long. That is one common mistake that I see a lot of women make is that not only do they apply powder or set their highlight with a powder that's not for them or for their skin tone, but they also will bake it and they'll bake it for way too long to where it'll make your light concealer even brighter and it looks crazy in pictures, okay? So I wanna take this powder from Black Radiance. It's a Black Radiance True Complexion Loose Setting Powder. It is yellow. I won't do the look up rule. I'll just go ahead and set my creases under my eye, which is a no-no. So I won't look up at all. I'll just go ahead and just set under here. I'm gonna apply a lot and then bake for a minute or a few minutes. Okay, so again, we have our do and we have our don't. I'm gonna go ahead and set the rest of my face. This is not really part of my hot and contour routine. I always set my face before I go ahead and set my contour. So what I do is I'll just take a skin colored face powder. I wanna take my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Dark and just set all over my face. Oh, 
I didn't go ahead and actually highlight my forehead um, and my nose. Let me go ahead and do that real quick because this is actually an area that I also see a lot of women mess up at. Um, and I guess that I can kind of just go ahead and do, I'll just do my don't on the forehead because that's the biggest area. And then I'll do the right way to do it on my nose, keep it bow and chin. So I'll go ahead and take my Maybelline and draw a slight line down the center of my nose. And I keep the concealer right on the tip top of the nose, you guys. Don't bring the concealer to the sides of your nose and don't make a thick line. You want it to be pretty slim and thin so that whenever you blend it out, you're creating that nice, you know, snatched nose. So you wanna keep a really nice thin line uh, on your cupid's bow, keep it real light and slight. Like just do a little bit here in the center and same thing on your chin. Just a little bit goes a long way. A major common mistake that I see women do is to over highlight your forehead. Now, I understand that if you have a smaller forehead, you don't really have to honestly highlight at all. I have a bigger forehead, so I typically like to highlight a little less and contour a little bit more. Now, let's just say I was working with my own personal forehead shape, okay? So if you have a bigger forehead, this is for you. And what I see is people that have bigger foreheads or that just have a bigger head in general, tend to over highlight okay so by over highlight i mean bring highlight all the way around here now again the whole point of hot and contouring is to highlight which means to attract light and to contour which means to detract light or to shrink those features so if you have a big forehead you ideally want to make your forehead look smaller right so if you want to make your forehead look smaller then you would highlight less and contour more, okay? If you have a small forehead, then you could highlight more and contour less. And you guys see my video, so you guys know how I typically highlight. I typically just apply a little bit of concealer like right here in the center, okay? But again, if you're doing it wrong, you wanna over highlight and apply highlight basically all over your forehead. So see how now I'm attracting more light to my forehead and my forehead looks way bigger than it needs to. Just wanna show you guys like the major, major, major differences in applying highlight. I'm gonna go ahead and also blend out my nose. And whenever I do my nose, I like to blend the product out with my Beauty Blender pinched together. And that helps to keep my product or the product on my nose basically right where I applied it. So I wanna keep that nice, slim line. I just wanna blend it out. So I'll just pinch the Beauty Blender together and just blend it out that way. Gotta do my keep it well, okay? And my chin. And again, on these areas down here, a little bit goes a long way. You don't wanna bring too much attention to it, so just a little bit is all you need. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and now and set my entire face all over with my skin colored face powder and just set that real quick. And I'll do that on both sides because it's not a big deal. This is not part of the actual routine, so. I just go ahead and set both sides real quick. And I always do this every time before I apply my powder, bronzer, powder contour product. Let me go ahead and also set my nose real quick. And I do the same thing in this step as I did before with blending it out is I'll take the Beauty Blender, pinch it, and then just drag that line down. Apply it to my cupid's bow, my forehead, and then my chin as well but i'll just go ahead and just apply this all over the forehead because again we already have product all over the place so it's no point in <laughs> trying to do a, a right way to set the forehead so now on to the powder contour or bronzer you guys know i typically just do bronzer and people ask me all the time what's the difference between bronzer and contour in my opinion whenever you're bronzing you're just warming up the skin you're just bringing color and dimension back into the skin Whenever you contour, you typically are using a darker or a really deep powder to create and define those features. So I typically just bronze just because I like just more of a natural warmth to the skin. I just prefer a really nice natural hints of color, but I will show you guys both the ways. Okay, so on my right side, I'm gonna go ahead and take my favorite bronzing powder. It's the MAC Studio Fix Powder in the shade NW48. And I'm gonna take my Laura Mercier bronzing brush Lightly dab it into the bronzer and just lightly take the brush and just kind of create nice natural strokes. So 
do a fish face and basically wherever you applied that cream contour is where you'll apply the bronzer powder okay so take it and just lightly go over it and you see how it's naturally building up some dimension but it doesn't look too muddy or too harsh or too dark it just looks natural i'll do the same thing take that same bronzer powder and this lightly pat around my forehead okay uh, lightly pat it and in my opinion I recommend to use a lighter or softer hand and build up product as opposed to applying too much because you guys know I always say that it's easier to add product on as opposed to take product away if I go a little crazy you can always take that powder brush that you use to apply your all over face powder and it's kind of help blend out any harsh edges and make anything that looks crazy nice and seamless like so. On my don't side, I'm gonna take a product that, honestly I can, it, because it's me I can make it work. So like I know how to work with it, but let's just say you didn't know how to work with it. I'm gonna take my CoverGirl Queen Collection bronzer in the shade Ebony Bronze, which is obviously much, much darker than my NW48, you guys see the difference, okay? Now I've used this plenty of times before, so I know how to actually make it work, but again, for the video's sake, Let's just say that I was gonna, you know, mess up purposely. Taking that same bronzer brush and the Queen Collection, I'm gonna apply way too much, okay, as a don't. Way, way too much. And you guys see how here, again, I followed my natural cheekbone and I applied the product exactly where I applied that cream contour. So on this side, I'll just go ahead and apply it where I applied that cream contour, which was too far down. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it down here. Okay. You see that? You see how I'm already losing my space shape? So over here, I have a nice, you know, defined shape that actually matches my natural face structure. And over here, I completely altered my face shape. Okay. So I'm going to apply it way too much. So you see how now it looks really muddy and it's starting to go onto my jawline. So it looks really, really crazy. That's a don't. I'm gonna apply this all over my forehead. Again, it's just getting really, really muddy, you guys. Like really, really, really muddy. And not only is this product, in my opinion, too dark, it's also too red. So the reason why I love, personally love the NW48 is because it's, um, it's basically like my exact undertone. This one over here is too red and I have obviously have very golden and caramel undertones. So it isn't blending in the proper way. And it's not cooperating with my foundation shade, with my highlight shade, even though that was too light. It's just not cooperating. So it's just sitting on top of my skin and it doesn't look blended whatsoever. So again, just blending it downwards onto my cheek and onto my jawline, and that just looks, that looks so crazy. Now, onto my nose contour, I'm gonna go ahead and take my Sonia Kashuk contour brush, my favorite brush to contour my nose, and just take a little bit of that NW48 powder, and just lightly apply it to the sides of my nose. And as you see, you guys, I'm applying it, okay, so here's the side of my nose, all right? Okay, and here's the top of my nose. So I'm applying that product on the top of my nose, right where that setting powder basically ends, okay? It's like super subtle, you can barely tell that I have anything there, but just something to define that line. So on the don't side, I wanna take my too red, too dark contour powder and apply this onto the side of my nose, okay? So see the difference? I applied this over here on the top of my nose, like right up here, and dragged it down. Okay, see, this is the top, and I just drag it down like this, right? Over here, I'm gonna go on the sides of my nose. I'm gonna take the brush and actually blend out the side of my nose. Ooh, that's too much. Oh, well, that was way too much. I did not mean to do all that, y'all. <laughs> Whoa, okay. People do do this, though. Like, let's be clear, people do do this. Like, they'll apply way too much powder, it'll be way too dark, and they'll apply it on the sides of the nose as opposed to on the top of the nose. So y'all get the gist. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and dust away any excess powder. 
that I have on both sides. Okay, so I think we're pretty much set as far as hot and contouring goes. That's basically like the typical hot and contour routine. Oh, I was gonna show you guys what I would do if I were bronzing and contouring. So this is just bronzer. And let's just say for fun's sake that I were to take the Ebony Girl, not the Ebony Girl, the CoverGirl Queen Collection Ebony Bronze Bronzer. If I wanted to contour with this powder, it would be really, really simple. First of all, I would not take this brush, okay? This brush is way too fluffy. So if I were to apply and contour it, it would get way too messy. And in my opinion, contouring is all about strategic placement. It's about placing the product right where you want it to define that feature. So I would take a, you know, soft angled brush like this, okay? Apply just a little bit. And apply a little bit right here towards the back of the cheekbone. Okay, so whenever I do contour, I don't bring the contour all the way down. I keep it right at the back, okay? And that creates that dimension and that depth. So what it'll do is it'll actually kind of darken up back here. You see how it kind of just changed the look? And now I can have a even more defined or higher cheekbone because I added a little bit of darker powder back there and it kind of blends into that bronzer. I'm gonna go ahead and now highlight with a shimmer highlight. So I'll just take my finger and apply it to my nose. Okay, I'll apply it to my Cupid's bow, a little bit to my forehead. I can show you guys the wrong way to do highlight on your cheekbones. So the right way would be to apply the highlight at the highest point of your cheekbone. So if I smile, the highest point is like right in here, okay? So the right way to do it would be to apply the highlight right around here. And not too much, just enough to bring some glow to your skin, okay? You could even bring it kind of around to the temples and create a nice C shape. But again, it's all about a nice soft glow. And I'm using the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighter in the shade Crown of My Canopy, it's one of my favorite drugstore ones. Let me do the bridge of my nose real quick. So I take my finger or a really thin like pencil shaped brush and apply it to my nose. And I only apply it to the top of my nose. So I'll bring it like about here. I never connect the line all the way down. If you guys know me, I always preach about the exclamation point method, which is just to make a line on the bridge of your nose and the point at the tip of your nose. So over here, I'll do it too far down, okay? See that, you see the difference? So over here, the height is up here, and over here, the height is all the way down here. So that's definitely a don't. And then of course, another don't is to apply way too much. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll go ham on the highlight, okay? That looks crazy. And I'm gonna leave it like that. I won't apply the lines connected. I'll just leave it just a streak like that because I've seen that plenty of times. And you guys can't tell me this isn't crazy. But we have to know when to put the brush down, when to step away. And this is just way too much. This is basically it for my highlight and contour routine. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the lips and get myself together and be right back for the final look. So you guys, here is the final look of my do's and don'ts of hiding and contouring. Hope you guys really learned something. I know, again, I always say this because it's so true, but makeup, especially hide and contouring is like, it's all a learning process. It's all practice, practice, practice. And I feel like once you get it down, it's really, really, really easy to do. And again, I feel like, as, in my opinion, if you have the right tools, hiding and contouring can be so easy. So again, one more time, here's my do's. Okay, and then here is the crazy don'ts. Okay, so we got, y'all, this is a lot going on over here. So I hope that you guys learned something from my do's and don'ts video. Um, if you guys did, let me know down below. And also let me know down below, which one are you? Are you on the do side? Are you on the don't side? And again, let me reiterate you guys, makeup is all personal preference. So if you are more on the don't side, that is okay. If that's how you like to do your makeup, girl go ahead do you you know you are totally fine again it's all my personal preference and what i believe to be the do's and the don'ts so if you guys enjoyed this makeup do's and don'ts video then go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i will catch you guys in the next video bye guys